Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be bringing you another regular Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can add climbable ladders to your game in Blender. So we're just going to jump right into things with the example. If you want to skip the example and go straight to how to set it up yourself, you can click the annotation at the top of the video. So in our example here, we have a little orange cube. We can spin him around and move him all over the place. And we have two ladders here. If we go up to them, we can climb up the ladder and we slide off that roof. We can also go up to the other ladder and climb up to the top of it and get on top of this building. So let's move on to how you can set this up for yourself. Okay, so this is what we're going to start with, and if you'd like to download this blend file, there's a link in the description so you can follow along exactly. Um, all that happens right now is that the cube can spin around, move backwards and forwards, and he can jump when he's on the ground. So that's a really basic setup there, just using a bunch of keyboard sensors and a radar sensor for detecting whether it's on the ground or not. Uh, now our character is a dynamic physics type object, actor checkmarked, and we are using the collision bounds box. So we have our ladder mesh here, um, and so this is just merely the visual aspect of our ladder, um, and we have its physics type set to no collision. And that's because the way that we're going to go about adding the climbable ladders is we're going to have an invisible uh, sort of boundary box around the ladder. So to do that I'm going to select my ladder, hit shift A, add mesh cube. I'm going to go into the objects tab, scroll down to where I see display, and instead of maximum draw type being textured I'm going to choose wire. We're going to go to the physics tab, check mark actor, and check mark collision bounds so that we're using the collision bounds box. I'm also going to check mark the invisible button so that uh, it will not render during the game. And so now we're just going to scale by pressing the S key uh, and using the middle mouse button to lock it onto a certain axis. We're just going to size him to where he kind of fits around the ladder. Uh, so this is going to be the actual climbable part of the ladder. Um, so we want to match them up pretty close to where the ladder is, uh, but it doesn't have to be exact. In the logic window here then, we're going to add a game property, and I'm going to name this property Ladder. Of course you can use any property name you want, but we'll have to remember that for later. Then on our character, uh, we need to decide uh, one of a few methods of climbing the ladder. Now the uh, method that I'm going to be showing you how to do today is using the radar sensor. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a radar sensor, add an AND controller, and add a motion actuator. We're going to wire the radar sensor into the AND controller, and we're also going to wire the W key into the AND controller. We can then wire this controller into the motion actuator. And now we're going to set up our radar sensor. So the property that we're going to be looking for is ladder, or whatever property you have set to your uh, climbable object here. Uh, the axis, we're going to choose the front axis for our object. The example with the cube uses the Y axis for forward motion. So I'm gonna use the positive Y axis. And angle and distance, we're going to have to mess with a little bit. I'm going to put in 0.8 for the distance for right now, and an angle of 40. And then to see if this is correct, we're going to go to the game menu and check mark show physics visualization. So whenever we play the game, if we spin the cube around, you can see there's a red cone coming out of the front of the cube, and that is our radar. So if the ladder is within that area, we will be climbing up. Uh, and so I want to make it a little bit wider and a little bit shorter. So I'm going to bump this up to 60 degree angle and maybe like a 0.65 distance. Play the game again, spin around. Uh, 
maybe a little bit light on the angle yet. I'm going to bump it up to 70. And that's probably good. So next we're going to go to our motion controller. So all that we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit to the Z axis on the linear velocity. So this will make the player start going up whenever we have the ladder within our radar and we are pressing the W key. So I can play the game, spin towards our ladder, go forward towards it, and I can climb up. So to adjust how quickly he goes up, we just simply increase or decrease uh, that number there, the z-axis linear velocity. So if we play again, I bumped it up to 10. If we move towards the ladder, we see we climb much faster. So this works, uh, but only for going forward into the ladder. And uh, I know in some games you can climb the ladder backwards as well. So if you back into the ladder, you start climbing the ladder. And to add that is much the same as what this is. We just add another radar sensor and we can match the uh, settings exactly, except for the axis. We want to do the inverse of the first axis. So we're gonna be looking for the property ladder and the other radar sensor is forward on the y-axis or positive y-axis. So this one is going to be the negative y-axis. And then we can add another controller, another AND controller. And if we wire this one into the S key, or the one that we're going to use to back up, we can then wire this directly into the exact same actuator. So then if we play the game, we can either walk into the ladder or we can back into the ladder. So the reason that this system is nice is that it's really quick to add new climbable surfaces. So for instance, if we want to add a bunch of vines, uh, we could have our vine texture on this wall here. And all I have to do is add a plane, line it up with the wall, check mark the actor mode, add a collision bounds, add a game property ladder and if I play the game I can then climb up this surface as well. So that's it for this tutorial. You can download the finished .blend file in the description down below. If you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments section down below. I will be more than willing to try and help you out. If you have a suggestion for a future tutorial there is a link in the description down below. But until then, I want to thank you guys very much for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.